My name is Phil Belanti. I'm from the WebEx Developer Evangelist team. Uh, today, we're really proud to present uh, the WebEx Contact Center for Developers overview. Um, so this is going to be an introduction to the APIs, uh, the developer portal, and all the great things that come along with that. Um, so I'll have the uh, the speakers introduce themselves in, in just a moment, but I want to start off with a, just a quick poll. Um, you know, how familiar are you with the uh, WebEx Contact Center platform? Uh, just a one through five, and hopefully everybody will have an extra star at least by the end of this session. Um, you know, in uh, us here on the WebEx for Developers team, I mean, we put on a, a monthly webinar. So really every month we do a different one. Uh, we want to do this contact center one as a series. Um, so uh, we're going to find out towards the end, you know, some of the topics that are most important to you so we can, you know, help decide on new content. Um, Next month, I'm going to be presenting a webinar. Uh, I'm going to jump back into WebEx messaging. We haven't done that in a while. I'm going to talk about buttons, cards, bots, all that fun stuff. Uh, hopefully, you do a little hands-on. Uh, but uh, okay, we have a lot of people here that are pretty familiar. That's good. Very good. And uh, hopefully, some of the people with the one and two stars, like I said, hopefully, we'll we'll get you more familiarized by the end of this one. Uh, we'll also be recording this session, if you haven't noticed already. So uh, we put up all of our past webinars on our uh, webinars page. That's developer.webex.com slash webinars. So you can see all of our past developer webinars, uh, and you can also register for uh, the ones that we have scheduled next. Um, so be looking out for um, our next webinar series uh, to be scheduled here shortly. Okay. All right, that's great. Um, but uh, before we start off with the, the main topic, um, you know, I just want to share some quick developer content updates and announcements, uh, you know, to share with you here today. Um, so on the first one, um, we have uh, some good content on getting started with the call control APIs for WebEx calling. So I, I recently just wrote a blog post uh, how you can get to know the call control APIs. Uh, that's for automating in call actions for WebEx calling users. Um, you know, the blog points to some great examples uh, or from great calling scenario examples on Postman. Uh, so you can get started testing really quickly. Um, defines a lot of these terms that maybe you're not, you're not familiar with on telephony. Uh, so uh, check out that blog. Um, and then the next one is the uh, Android SDK. Um, so utilizing uh, dynamic feature modules. Uh, so Android, uh, you know, has a recommendation to use dynamic feature modules, and particularly for larger applications. And now you can seamlessly integrate uh, the WebEx Android SDK into dynamic modules. Um, so you can utilize these modules to reduce your app size, um, and it makes your WebEx uh, Android SDK apps much more efficient. Um, so uh, my colleague, Rankush Kumar, you know, explained in a new blog post how we kind of cracked the code on uh, using Android dynamic feature modules uh, with our SDK. And then next, uh, we have our single sign-on authorization options for uh, WebEx embedded apps. Um, so uh, login with WebEx, that's the name of the OpenID Connect standard for developers. Um, they can use existing WebEx accounts for authenticating their apps. Um, so the embedded app SDK has two different SSO options. You know, you either do a third-party SSO or you can use login with WebEx. Um, and login with WebEx works really well, you know, particularly if you want to authenticate users within your app without having to turn on personal identifiable information or PII. Um, so that would be the route to take um, because, you know, it would be, uh, you know, you can actually get details from each WebEx user uh, from using that flow. Um, the leader of the WebEx developer evangelism team, Adam Weeks, he published a great article on that topic to tell you all about it. And then finally, we have uh, WebEx One coming up. We're really excited about that. Uh, that's going to be in Anaheim, uh, California at the Marriott there. Uh, so you can join us live or virtually. Uh, we're going to unveil a bunch of new innovations and hybrid work and customer experiences. Uh, the customers will also be there to share ideas um, you know, for collaborating on projects and and this also helps build out your professional networks. So it's going to be a really good time. Uh, there's a lot of training sessions there and other learning tracks. Um, so get registered today at WebEx1.com. Uh, and be sure to utilize that code you see on the screen there. You'll save 50% on your ticket. So we hope to see everybody there. Um, 
And uh, with that, let's get into the main session here. Uh, I'm going to uh, hand it over to our main speakers to introduce themselves and uh, take it away. All right. Thank you, Phil. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sandhya Muthuvel. I'm the product manager for the Programmatic Contact Center team. Um, and, to, and today I have uh, Arna Bhattacharji with me. He's the leader of engineering uh, solutions integrations. Um, and today we're hoping to give you an overview of Contact Center and the developer platform. Um, before we jump into the agenda, can we also um, switch on to the other poll that we have? Um, we want to know um, what is the current role in your company? Uh, you can just um, type it in and we just want to see the word cloud. Um, uh, uh, how, what are the types of product um, or what are the types of roles you, you are representing? All right. All right, there's a lot of solution architects, engineers. This is looking good. TSAs, but mostly engineers. So this is good to know. Uh, please do keep them coming in um, and we will just like jump into the agenda because we have a, a full packed show for you. Um, so I'm, I want to give you an overview of what Contact Center is in case you're not familiar with, uh, with it and what WebEx platform actually has and also the developer platform that we have today. Um, and that will be covered through the um, developer portal walkthrough. Um, we have a customer experience um, developer portal that is um, separate from the WebEx portal. Um, and we also want to showcase a sample use case, um, a demo that will be uh, given by Arnab. Um, and in the end, we want to wrap it up with uh, resources and support that you can get from us um, so that we will be able to uh, jump in and help you throughout the developer journey. The next slide. All right. Um, when you think about customer service um, or, you know, if you have any problem with some any type of service that you have, any business that you are uh, associated with, the first thing that you're thinking about is to Google their, their toll free number, right, or, or one of their um, customer care numbers. Um, so in our realm, we call it as the entry point. Um, it's going to be the phone number that anybody's going to call into, or even um, digital channels like uh, they were going to search for the voice pod so that, or sorry, the chat pod so that they would be able to reach out to some some type of a representative from a business. Um, the next slide. So as soon as you call into a service, the first thing that you're going to hear from um, them is the IVR menu or the interactive voice response menu. Uh, which was traditionally the, um, you know, press one to reach to a particular service or press two to reach to a particular team. Um, and now we've upgraded to conversational bots where you don't have to press anything. Um, you could just have a conversation with the IVR bot, bot and it would be able to help you um, resolve your issues. It, if you're calling in for, um, a, you know, a particular problem or a query, um, the IVR menu is trying to help you get to that um, resolution as quickly as possible. Next slide. So this self-service orchestration is actually done by a no-code, low-code designer, which is available as a part of the contact center. Um, and this is... It, this helps in routing and queuing um, the call to the right uh, agents. So every agent would be a part of a queue or a team, um, and that particular team would uh, have their own set of business logic, right? Like you, you would be reaching out to the sales team if you're if you have a sales query, um, and this is done by the automatic call distribution. Um, and all of this business logic is contained um, as a part of the flow flow developer. Um, next slide. And once you are able to um, reach to an available agent, um, you, you're probably talking to the person with the best, type, best skill set who can help you. Um, they are provided with a great tool, which is the agent desktop as, that's available as a part of the uh, contact center license. Um, and it has lots of bells and whistles, widgets and tools that helps the agent um, answer their queries or you know, resolve a problem. Um, from here, they're able to place a, a call, uh, they're able to transfer it to someone else, um, call in for help with their supervisors, um, and here they also would be able to see analytics um, and the customer journey, um, so that if there are previous um, interactions with the company, the agent is up to date with the uh, information about their journey, and, is they, and they're able to help in, uh, because they they're able to jump in and help right away because they have the context for it. Next slide. So once the um, call has come to a resolution, um, you know, you would always see, you hear them say, hey, can you give us feedback about the um, agent 
or there are follow-up actions required, right? Um, maybe there's a pro promotional offer or there's like a written confirmation of whatever happened during the call um, so that the um, customer has receipts so that they can reach out to you in case they still have any queries. So the next slide. So this is the end-to-end -end journey of, um, you know, a, of a, a contact center, the way it works. And there are like multiple touch points here, right? The first thing is like the, the call itself, the voice plat platform itself. You have the no-code, low-code flow designer. Um, you have the agent desktop, and you have a similar one for supervisor as well. Um, and then you have the analytics platform because that's where you want to see, you know, how well you're doing it. Um, and these are the different touch points within contact center. The next slide. And the last and one of the most important things in um, the contact center realm is the analytics. We have our own analyzer um, product where uh, you're able to see how well the call has, um, or how well an interaction went, right? Um, was it, um, were, were you able to see um, most of the calls being attended? Where, what is the wait time looking like? Um, and so many other um, you know, data points that everybody's looking for, you would be able to find that as a part of an analyzer um, desktop. And uh, there are like about hundreds um, you know, stock reports available here. Um, and this is, these are all the places where you can contribute. The next slide. So um, when I talk about an open developer platform, what does that actually mean? Um, and what, what do I actually mean by tailoring every step of um, you know, the customer and the agent journey. There are different verticals within, well, most businesses, right? We are trying to address problems of the healthcare vertical or um, you know, finance vertical. Um, there are no two companies who, do, uh, who take the same approach with customer service. They're all trying to do the best they can because this is the, the representative of the company and the uh, customer relationship, right? Um, but they all are trying to customize um, certain aspects of their um, journey, and they want to make sure that the end customer is happy with um, any of the services that they're providing. So you'd be able to jump into Analyzer, or you, you'd be able to contribute to the agent desktop, and, um, and that way they, you would be able to enrich the experience for a customer. Next slide. So as a developer, you would be able to help us in these realms. Um, the first thing is going to be building on, on top of what we have. So the WebEx Contact Center already has a couple of um, you know, tools available that's going to be helpful for, let's say, an administrator or for a, an agent. Um, but there are things that you can work on, you can improve upon, and then you can um, customize it for a, a customer or a business's a business need. Um, for instance, like I said, we already have hundreds of stock reports available as a part of our analyzer. Um, but you can still create your own custom wall board, right? Um, this is probably very specific to healthcare or it's very specific to, to a bank uh, or financial uh, service. So that way they'd be able to use it and make, uh, make sense of the data that we're giving them. Um, similarly, there are other use cases like um, you know, workforce optimization. Uh, you want to make sure that the, um, you know, the staffing of a particular queue is uh, accurate. Um, if there is a surge in the number of calls or interactions that are coming through, you want to make sure that they're all um, you know, attended to in a timely manner. Um, that is done by workforce optimization, which is another um, you know, uh, out of supplement out-of-box solution. Um, and also we have uh, quality management where you are trying to see if the agents are performing well um, and how you can aid in improving um, you know, areas where uh, they're lacking in. Um, and there's also custom and uh, custom agent and supervisor desktop that you can possibly build for um, your users. The next thing is you'd be able to build in. Um, what we mean by that is you can build within the different um, areas. Um, and right now you can see a, a diagram that says like plug in your app here. So this is the um, agent desktop that we have there where the agent is actually attending a call. Um, and you can plug in your app there so that the agent would be able to see it and they'd be able to use it as along with, the, with, their, with their service or their interaction. Um, this way, you're able to help the um, agent with, with any of the tools or solutions that you're providing, um, and you're building it within Contact Center. Similarly, you have CRM connectors, right? That what we mean by that is you can take our uh, desktop solution and plug it into your C CRM um, solution. Um, that way, you, you can still continue using WebEx Contact Center in, in um, another CRM uh, service. Uh, we'll be adding a AI connectors and flow connectors as a part of our um, roster pretty soon. 
Next slide, please. So I talked about building in and building within, uh, building on and building within, but how do you get started? So we have uh, Arnab and a lot of our um, contact center team who's built um, sample codes, um, sample code and SDKs. This is one place where you can actually start taking a look at, oh, this is how you can possibly build a widget. Um, and you can build it within the WebEx um, developer sandbox. So we have a contact center sandbox that is available um, where you can, you'll be uh, given a couple of licenses so that you can act as if you are the um, admin, supervisor, agent, um, and also the user and see what the end-to-end -end journey is looking like within that uh, sandbox. We will be adding more blogs and um, service apps as well so that you can get started and work, um, work with the tools that we have. And this is the entire developer platform um, that we have in, in the developer portal. Next slide. So in our developer portal today, I just like talked about a couple of use cases, right? If you're, if you're trying to build a, a custom desktop, you would want to see um, how you can possibly um, leverage the APIs. Like you would want to use a, a desktop API. Um, that way you'd be able to log in and log out. You'd want the contact control APIs. That way you'd be able to route the API, um, uh, route the calls or the interaction to, to someone. Um, and we have multiple other APIs, like the journey APIs, which is going to help you with the customer journey itself, right? Um, where you're able to understand what, what is their history or their past with your business. Um, and you would be able to, um, uh, and the agent would be able to serve them based on their uh, previous interactions. We'll be adding AI APIs um, and experience management APIs. Experience management is nothing but post-call survey. Um, so that way you, you'd be also able to help them, uh, you know, after the call. Next slide. And we don't just stop with your development journey right there, right? After you're complete with your development, we want to help you go to market. Um, and you, uh, many of you might be familiar with the WebEx App Hub. Um, this is our marketplace, and this is where we are showcasing all of the uh, apps that are compatible with WebEx Contact Center. Um, and for you, and we, are, we have a great team of uh, business development managers who would be able to help you position your app uh, in the WebEx App Hub. Um, and the way you can reach out to us is by filling out the interest form. This is available in, in the WebEx developer portal. It's there, right there in the landing page. And once you do click through to contact center, you would be able to reach out to us. Um, that this way we'll be able to help you have a conversation about what your solution is and um, you know, talk about next steps. And from here, I think I'm gonna hand it off to Arunab um, and he'll be walking you through the developer portal. Yep, thanks a lot, Sandarya. So uh, as you can see that we have our WebEx contact center customer experience developer portal. Uh, what you notice is it's uh, developer.webex-cx.com, which is customer experience. You can also get to our developer portal straight from our WebEx for developers portal. So you can see developer.webex.com if you look at contact center, uh, it actually cross launches to the contact center developer portal. Uh, once you're in our developer portal, you'd wanna do a couple of things, right? Uh, maybe you don't have a WebEx contact center uh, organization or, or an instance yet. So you could actually sign in as long as you have a WebEx account. And once you sign in, you could go to our sandbox feature. This was a new feature that we launched and you could actually request for a sandbox. Now today uh, we are evaluating our sandbox request. So this is, a kind of a request response model. Uh, we will uh, you know, uh, give you a sandbox within 48 hours once we confirm the use case, but we wanna actually understand your interest for building with WebEx Contact Center. So you could actually click on request sandbox. You could get, a, get yourself a sandbox with WebEx Contact Center, a real DNs, right? So we actually provide you a real dialable number. We also auto provision a whole lot of configuration entities automatically onto that sandbox. So you don't have to really uh, configure you know, the end-to-end. The -end. All you need to do is just uh, receive that email from the sandbox and, uh, and then you know, dial into the number. So this is what the sandbox uh, provisioning email looks like. Once you receive details that your sandbox has been provisioned, we provide you, you know, everything from the admin.webex.com control hub links, a premium agent, a supervisor, and then an entry point number that's all wired up and ready to go. Right? And we also have a bunch of learning labs. I'm gonna cover what you could do if you don't know about WebEx Contact Center to get up to speed. The next thing, once you actually have your sandbox, is you'd wanna actually look at our API documentation. So right from getting started to the authentication mechanism, which is the familiar WebEx auth, 
uh, right? That, which uses uh, the same WebEx OAuth that Contact Center uh, requires. All, all we uh, differ from is the scopes. So you just have Contact Center licenses on your instance. Once you have those licenses, you could uh, create your app integration, uh, just like how you're familiar with if you've already with, uh, worked with WebEx. So you get a pair of client ID and client secret, and then you'd have uh, Contact Center scopes with uh, regards to what you want to do on the platform and how you want to use those APIs. And uh, once you have uh, you know, the WebEx uh, Contact Center instance, you have access to the entire API reference here. So everything that Sondra spoke about, we can start with configuring your Contact Center. So the sandbox itself uses a bunch of APIs to auto-provision the, the sandbox. So we've actually created an entry point for you. We've also created a queue. Uh, we've created uh, you know, a set of teams as well as agent profiles, et cetera, inside of the sandbox. And this is how you could actually view those configuration APIs. We have a full REST API documentation along with you know, the uh, detailed request response body, the schema, as well as uh, ability to get this in uh, various different uh, vari variants, right? So you get different variants here. You could copy this curl command, or you could also try it out. Now, before you try it out, like I said, you should have a administrator user who has a WebEx contact center license to actually try it out. So if you just sign up to uh, WebEx Contact Center for developers and try it out, and if you don't have an organization with a license, you may just uh, get uh, you know an error saying that you don't have a license. So you want to actually log in with your sandbox administrator, the sandbox that we just spoke about, and then actually just uh, hit an API call. So just let's take a look at one uh, example API call. Let's go uh, try to get all the queues that have been configured onto this uh, sandbox. You can see that there are a bunch of queues here. You can also do things like you know filter based on R R SQL. Like we have a whole lot of uh, different ways to filter. You could filter based on ID, filter based on name, etc., and then actually run those uh, API calls. So you can see now that I filtered out only this queue, which is an external IVR queue um, and an outbound queue. Uh, similarly, uh, just with the configuration APIs itself, you could see we also have bulk export and bulk import APIs. Right. So if you want to actually configure things in bulk. You could use our bulk export, bulk import APIs. And this takes me to the next bunch of APIs that uh, you know, we just spoke about, which was we have our desktop REST APIs available today. So you could potentially create a, a new uh, you know, contact center desktop and uh, build it completely just API first uh, on WebEx contact center. What that means is that agents could potentially log into your app and then get contacts routed to them. So we have things like login, logout APIs, and these are all REST APIs that you would use to actually build your custom desktop uh, right from the agent side, which is uh, agent presence, uh, making sure that they have their correct state change. Those of you who are already familiar with contact center know that an agent has to be available to actually get a call, right? So that's what you would use for a actual agent REST API. Along with agent APIs, we have uh, call control APIs. So that's when you actually get the call onto your desktop and the agent's routed a call. You have REST APIs now that you could call externally, right? Right from accepting, uh, ending the task, consulting uh, conference, et cetera. Now, uh, the other thing that you'll notice in all of our REST API documentation is we have uh, webhooks as well for certain uh, types of uh, APIs. So uh, looking at call recordings, what uh, Sandhya just spoke about, in the AI realm, you want to have all of your transcripts of the call. You want to have all of the recordings of the call. You want to have data about all the interactions. So Captures is your uh, go-to. You, we have a, a media API called the Captures API that allows you to actually fetch that call recording wave file. Along with the REST API, you, we also provide you webhooks. Now, those of you who are not familiar with webhooks, uh, webhooks is a way to subscribe to events on Contact Center. So to couple webhooks, what you just saw, agent REST API, so log in, log out. We also give you webhook events when an agent logs in, when an agent logs out. When some agent has changed their state, for example, uh, along with that, similar with tasks as well that I just spoke about, we have REST APIs, and then we have webhooks coupled with that. So your app could potentially register for all these events and then continuously receive uh, events uh, on that endpoint that you register for. Uh, the registration for that is, uh, is nothing but a subscriptions API where you subscribe for events on WebEx Contact Center. So this is your register subscription API that you'd want to say, okay, give me all the events for login, logout, give me all the events for uh, task, new, ended, parked, connected. Parked is nothing but a task that's queued. So you get to know when these calls are trickling in onto the platform, and then your app would uh, get a notification, right? So you want to register a subscription 
also make sure you understand all of those different webhooks that we spoke about, and then uh, you would get continuous events onto your app. Now, I spoke about uh, building your desktop. The most important uh, concept for uh, real-time application is uh, continuous events. So we have a WebSocket uh, notification endpoint as well that we've published recently. It's called the notification subscribe, and this is mainly for uh, the agent desktop. So you want to make sure that anything that the agent is getting in terms of activities and tasks that are being assigned to the agent, whether the agent actually picked the call or not, all of these could be subscribed through through a WebSocket API. And this subscription API is what you would actually register to, and then you would actually get secure WebSocket events onto your app continuously. And that's how you would build a re near real-time uh, app, which is uh, you know operating on events. So we spoke about REST API documentation. We spoke about how to make a test call. Uh, and we also spoke about webhooks. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is, is reporting and how that actually ties in onto our WebEx Contact Center API uh, documentation. So Contact Center is not complete without reporting. We have a bunch of reporting APIs. We have uh, canned APIs that give you a sliding window or fixed window kind, kind of report. So these are uh, get queue statistics, for example, as you can see that you could uh, give a date time range and then you could uh, supply a bunch of queue IDs and then get uh, actual uh, data in a pre-populated or pre-canned format. But uh, this is basically on your queue side and on the agent statistics side and agent activities side, for example, you could get agent activities on the platform. Uh, this is a REST API again, but it's canned. It's not like you could uh, draft your own uh, request and ask for whatever you need, right? So with that, we have this search API. So uh, if there's anything that I want to leave you with uh, from this uh, session, it is that uh, WebEx Contact Center now has a query language uh, support for reporting APIs. It's not SQL this time, it is GraphQL. So GraphQL allows you to uh, basically draft out SQL-like queries. And uh, we, we have a GraphQL editor here, which uh, you can actually copy paste queries. And the way that it's sent to the WebEx Contact Center services it's drafted as a post payload. So you basically write your entire query here, and then uh, you could look at what are the different tables for those of you coming from the SQL background that are available. So we're kind of uh, exposing it as objects. Uh, we have all of the tasks, all of the task details in the platform. And let me make it bigger so, so y'all can see this. And then if you wanna look at all of the uh, different fields, you go down the graph, and then we provide you all of the different fields that are available on the platform per uh, object type. Right? So that this is a big takeaway in the sense you want to extract all the call details, all of the agent session details, and also want to extract some data from the platform, draft out a graph uh, QL uh, request. And uh, the first thing you're going to ask me is, okay, I, I have no clue about graph QL. Tell me a little more about how do I do this? So right on the getting started page, you'll see uh, samples, right? That Sonira spoke about. You could just cross launch it here, or you could go you know, from the left, uh, navigation pane, and you could also see samples here. We also have FAQs and our community page. But what you want to do is look at our samples, and then also look at uh, the different types of use cases that you want to, uh, you know, execute. Uh, so we have config samples, and we have, of course, reporting samples. Which uh, the question was, okay, how do we get started with with reporting? So looking down of the reporting sample, we have our GraphQL samples, where we have uh, drafted out some example requests uh, right from how you could pull data from WebEx Contact Center. So let's try to uh, actually pull all of the contact fields. So you look at this, right? Uh, this is essentially uh, a kind of all contact fields uh, query uh, inside WebEx CC. And let's go back to the search task API and then paste that. What you see here is a very uh, SQL-like syntax saying select from task details where uh, time from and to. Uh, all of this is epoch timestamp in the sense uh, it's a uh, number of milliseconds from you know uh, Jan 1st, 1970. So let me just uh, use a utility like you could use node or you could even use a browser to do a date dot now you could try to get uh, okay let me get all the calls from the last five minutes hopefully uh, if there is a call you'll see it here uh, now you can see that there's no call yet so let me go ahead and show you uh, a real call right so make a test call and here i'm logging into the agent desktop and this is the desktop url that you would get inside of your, uh, um, you know, your sandbox notification. So logging in as an agent, I'm gonna use the new WebRTC endpoint, so I don't need to actually register any device or phone. 
you can see that uh, desktop telephony is connected successfully and i'm just going to go ahead and uh, i'm going to make a call and of course i don't want to make a call using my phone uh, developers right so let's make a call programmatically from uh, using postman now for those of you who want to know okay how do i download the entire postman collection for webex contact center i want a list of apis like you have all of this is available inside of our github sample so you would see github samples postman sample download that collection uh, go straight to task apis and then there's a create a call now what you can see is i'm actually creating a call programmatically i'm going to send uh, a couple of attributes with that call you can see it's 201 created the call has been created and let's see uh, if uh, the platform actually has the call so the agent is not ready right and let's try to actually search for uh, a call and i'm going to use date now again and see if uh, i do have um, a call sitting there so you can see uh, i just sent a call programmatically i now also queried for that call data i can see that call is actually parked it's it's at the queue uh, there's no owner um, it hasn't been delivered to an agent yet all right so let me just uh, go available and see if the agent actually gets that call what you can see here is uh, the call being delivered to the agent i'm just going to answer that and uh, let me just mute and end the call just to show you what happened there's a whole lot of things that happened right there so what you saw is uh, the task api uh, from a system from an external system proactively contacted the customer knowing some details about the customer maybe you had a crm system maybe you had some metadata about the customer and you wanted to know okay you know what let me contact this customer you also said when you call the customer connect the customer to a flow right and uh, in that flow i'm going to do a whole lot of uh, other wizardry like pull ap uh, you know details from the crm know if the customer is a vip customer or not uh, know that renewal status uh, whether they're active or not uh, what is the channel that uh, they actually came through they came through a demo and then what is the first name last name so this is like an example of how you initiate a contact and like what sandria had mentioned inside the flow designer you could orchestrate webxcc as a client so you could add your systems that you want as servers, uh, orchestrate that, fetch data from the CRM, push it into the agent uh, desktop, and then of course, uh, you know, uh, to to come full circle, let's see if uh, if this contact actually has an owner. You could see that okay, this contact has been ended, uh, it's been done. Uh, this agent answered it. Uh, this was the site, and this was the entire you know details of the duration, etc. Uh, now you also have uh, some cool information about the call, which is like the call ID, the session ID, right? So you want to also, of course, you have metadata about the call, which is cool. You could do th something like you could do a filtration for this call inside the uh, API. We all also have that example as well. So you go to GraphQL sample, you go to interaction details, and uh, right there, you see a filter that, okay, you know what, give me all the inbound calls from this customer, but make sure that it is this call ID, because I have the call ID as well and the customer called into my main line, which is my destination, right? So you could kind of like uh, filter and query exactly like you have in SQL, like select from where, uh, you know, these are the filters, right? So those of you who come from there, it's easy uh, on how to actually um, translate that to GraphQL and then hit an API call, get your tasks. Uh, and then the next thing you want to do is, uh, okay, uh, this call was done. Let me make sure that the agent uh, wrapped up the call, right? You submit a wrap up. And then let me also see if I can get the call recording for that call. So you go straight into your captures API, and then you could draft or try out, um, you know, this this call. Maybe you put the task ID here, and then of course you put your org ID. So let's do that. Um, just copying it here, pasting it here, and then let's see if I get the call recording of the demo live. So you see that uh, I got uh, the response, and I got a file path, right? So. This file path is valid uh, and gives me the access to the call recording. Uh, it's of course uh, hosted in a SD bucket. So I could just copy that and paste it here and you could actually save that uh, combined recording file, right? So you saw the end-to-end -end life cycle of initiating a task programmatically, uh, you know, uh, also initiating the contact programmatically and uh, getting reporting data as well programmatically. So a couple of things happened here, I'll just recap. The customer called in uh, the uh, flow, uh, you know, uh, customer did not call in. In fact, the external app initiated an interaction proactively. We called the customer, we connected the agent, and while we did that, we connected the customer to the flow. The flow then did an HTTP request 
went to the external system, picked some data out of from the CRM, realized, okay, this is a high value customer, queue it to this team. And, uh, you know, with that also sent some screen pop and custom widgets. And then uh, once we wrapped up, we got uh, reporting as well as, uh, you know, um, disposition and call recordings as well. So uh, with that, I wanted to also touch base on what you could do in the agent desktop, right? So in the agent desktop, you have, you can see that, uh, first of all, uh, for those of you who already used WebEx CC, uh, this, uh, you might say this doesn't look right because it's kind of jumbled up. That's the whole point of the agent desktop layout. We do allow you to kind of rearrange uh, the icons as well as the call control actions and then add more advanced header actions. So as a developer, the first place you want to uh, be is front and center for the agent. You could probably build an app yourself. So here uh, we have built the WebEx embedded app where the agent can do messaging, for example, to their organization. But as a developer, this is the header region where you could add a widget just like this one and then bring it into the agent desktop. And then, uh, of course, uh, we have a whole lot of other customizable areas. Here you can see that uh, someone could also build something like uh, an address book widget or something like you could even call it uh, an attendant console, right? Where this is a completely custom uh, user interface that's been brought into the agent desktop using web components. And someone could actually search for, you know, um, someone, uh, some caller, and then click to actually call the caller. All of this is being orchestrated with the power of our SDKs. So just showing you the example. Right, so that was a click to call example uh, from the widget itself. And what this widget allows you to do if you actually develop it using web components is we have something called a WebEx contact center desktop uh, SDK or software development kit. What that allows you to do is uh, orchestrate actions just like how our homegrown widgets have orchestrated it, but do it with uh, JavaScript, right? So you write a JavaScript widget like this, and you can do things like call, consult, transfer, in another example, uh, let's take one example where uh, maybe you want to, uh, you know, experiment with uh, changing the agent state. So you could also, this is just an example of how you would change the agent state using the widget. So you could say ready and not ready right there. Uh, you could also use a widget to add to the business data payloads. So you could see that the customer just has a phone number, a queue, and a DNIS. And uh, what you want to do is, you know, update your CAD variables. For example, you want to add in something like account ID. What you just saw there was there's a call that came in, but the widget actually added some business data, which we call CAD variables, customer associated data into that call. And we added like a, an account ID right there, right? So these are kind of things that you could do with the widget. Uh, the other things that you could also potentially do with the widget is, uh, is automate your pause and resume. Uh, we have this all of available for free on our developer samples. So anytime a agent goes and uh, uh, tries to enter some credit card information in a widget, you could trigger a automated pause of the recording uh, and all of these uh, different things that you could do with the widget. So that's a uh, example of uh, what custom widgets can accomplish on a WebEx contact center desktop and, and, and also with the power of our APIs, right? So uh, with that, I would also like to cover a couple of interesting use cases. Uh, so you could do more with webhooks. We've had this question, uh, uh, you know, come in uh, give me uh, different use cases that I could do with webhooks. So webhooks essentially is an event-driven publish subscribe sort of model where uh, your app doesn't actually send REST API calls. You register for it. We have these uh, webhooks available today. So agents, tasks, and captures. And uh, just uh, looking at where that is in our documentation, you could see it uh, right there. Webhooks connection for developers, agent webhook. Uh, these are the three. And then you have task, and then you have captures. So all of these are uh, allowing your application to pretty much get that near real-time data. You don't uh, poll for changes. And what we also recommend is uh, you, if you have a, uh, you know, an analytics use case, you'd want to do something like uh, trickle that data along with your webhooks. You could also have scheduled jobs or, you know, you could call it even a cron job. Scheduled jobs, reconciliation jobs to actually pull data from WebX Contact Center. So you saw an example of me uh, pulling data from the system in, in real time, uh, looking at whether a call was queued and then what happened to the call, pulling the call recording. You could have an app uh, that brings their own analytics. So for example, if you as a developer have an idea of bringing in AI on top of the data, that the data is the foundation. So you have to have the data. That's what we provide with our uh, search API. 
with the webhooks that I just showed you. So you have contact data and agent data trickling in, and then you have uh, REST API calls uh, reconciling the end-to-end -end data once the call is done. You want to get information about the wrap-up, information about the survey scores, uh, information about the transcript, information about the recordings. So you could pretty much build, build your own analytics uh, in this way. This is just a schematic of how to do that. And then you could take this one step further. Okay, Webhooks is not just for reporting. Webhooks is also for uh, near real-time or real-time events, right? So here's a nice use case for Webex messaging with Webex contact center. So what you see here is an agent logs in and logs out. We get webhooks, but then a certain queue, let's call it a VIP queue, needs a minimum of five agents logged in at any given time because our peak callers are like, we have like 200, 300 calls, out of which many are self-service, but then we have to have a minimum of five agents logged in during that shift. So you could pretty much design an external app that sends a supervisor alert to the supervisor using a Webex messaging bot token. So this is how you could uh, you know, marry the Webex world of Webex contact center with Webex messaging and build a near real-time bot that kind of alerts the supervisor that, hey, you know what, this queue does not have enough agents, right? So this is another example of how the notification service could be something that you subscribe. Maybe you just write a Node.js uh, cloud uh, function that uh, kind of uh, gets this event and then operates on this event and then sends a message to the supervisor. We can take this even one step further and then say, okay, I want this for calls as well. So in, in terms of when uh, the calls are done, I want uh, the VIP callers to get, you know, a monitoring by our supervisors. So could you do it proactively? Could you do it even before the callers in the queue and got talking to the agent and their CSAT is low? You could do it probably proactively. So these are kind of things that you could do with task and capture webhooks. You could get the call recording. You could get the actual task while it's in the queue that, hey, there's a VIP caller. You might want to step in and monitor this call uh, and then give that to the supervisor as a bot message in inside of WebEx messaging, right? So these are kind of the use cases that you can achieve right out of the box today. So with that, you know, I'd like to actually call uh, a couple of things to action what, what you just saw today, right? Uh, you saw that uh, there is a way to ask for a developer sandbox. So in case you don't have access to WebEx contact center, all of the cool stuff that I showed you, you could do that just by logging in, uh, make sure that you have a free account, and then just request for a sandbox. You will notice this uh, pop-up that says, you know, we are currently evaluating sandbox requests. So give us like two days to get back to you with uh, with the sandbox. We also want to know what you're building. So that's kind of going to help us, uh, you know, meet your needs in terms of exactly what you want us to build, right? Uh, and for those of you who've already received a notification that, hey, your sandbox is good to go, this is what it would look like. You'd get an email notification with everything and you'd have a detailed guide on terms of uh, what's been configured for you. Those of you who are new to WebEx Contact Center, you don't know uh, how to get started, right? We have something called WebEx Contact Center Learning Labs. This is uh, completely free, by the way. You can just access it at webexcc.github.io. It has step-by-step -step labs, right from logging in an agent to configuring WebEx Contact Center to what is the reporting platform, everything out of box. So foundational knowledge, you could call it 101 knowledge, on WebEx CC available right from beginner to advanced level. So we also have how to customize the layout, how to add a widget, what you just saw. Uh, and all of these have embedded video walkthroughs, right? So everything's free, uh, available. Uh, if you want to get started in WebEx CC, uh, I would urge you all to you know go to the WebEx Contact Center Learning Labs and take a look at that, right? And uh, last but not the least is the sample code. So right from initiating the, uh, you know, the, the API call that you saw, which was proactive contact notification to the customer. Uh, all of that is available free. You can just go to github.com and go to Webex Contact Center API samples. This is now under Webex samples. So if those of you already bookmarked Webex samples and you have your bot and your meetings and your calling and other API samples, right under there you will see Webex Contact Center API samples. That's a new repository. Uh, all of it is available there. Those of you who had the old bookmark, nothing to worry. It auto redirects you to our new location. It has detailed how-to videos inside of the README. So uh, the first time you get onto the GitHub repo, it could be a little uh, you know, uh, intimidating. It has like 35, 36 different examples, but when you go to each of the folders, it does have uh, readmes with vidcasts or videos. Right? So just watch the video, try out the code, uh, clone it on your local. And then uh, the first thing I would do is, of course, go to the Postman example. So now we've updated this uh, Postman sample. So right inside of uh, WebEx Connect Center API samples, you can download the Postman uh, collection, right? Uh, download the Postman collection. 
configure all of your uh, you know environment variables. So all of your secrets and uh, things in terms of application, uh, uh, you know, uh, client ID, etc. All of the stuff uh, you would need to configure it as your environment variable here, right? So that's all provided to you inside of our API collection itself. Right? So you, you don't have to you know uh, worry about what needs to be configured. Of course, uh, your data center is important, and then you'll get the collection of the entire uh, WebXCC APIs uh, in in Postman. So that's something that you'd uh, want to do immediately after this session. And uh, if you want to uh, have a step-by-step -step on how to do it, there are two videos there. So it, it covers WebEx OAuth 2 with Postman, and then it also covers uh, a Postman collection with uh, with Token Refresh. And that's how you would get started with, with the APIs and then explore our sample code. And then finally, you'd want to know what's new. So we have something called an API change log. And what I would also recommend after this session is uh, go to our developer portal. Right there on the left, you'd see things like rate limiting. This is important as a developer uh, to know that all of our APIs are rate limited. So you'd get a 429 with a response of how many seconds your app has to pretty much uh, you know, uh, back off and retry. You'd have to build that inside of your app. So you want to make sure that uh, you retry after like four seconds because we are kind of rate limiting you. Along with that, you also want to look at things like our change log. Is something changed? Right, I had an app that was working. Uh, I'm not able to understand why this doesn't work anymore. We do have uh, major changes to be backward compatible. We do not want to make breaking changes, but if we do have to make breaking changes, then we do publish that in advance uh, on our API change log. So we, we are committed to doing that. And uh, if you all have any questions on the API change log, uh, what is the turnaround time, et cetera, we do uh, request you to subscribe uh, to this change log. And then once you subscribe to it, you obviously get a heads up on if and when uh, there is a change to the WebEx Contact Center API specification and whether you have to take care of that uh, as an app developer or someone who has live customers using our APIs, right? Uh, the second uh, you know, and most important place I'd like you all to participate in is the developer community. So we have uh, the WebEx Contact Center dev community inside of developer hub, developer collaboration and contact center. So use the labels. WebEx Contact Center APIs when you're uh, asking a question. Now, for those of you coming from WebEx, this is a different developer community from the WebEx, uh, you know, meetings developer community. So we have something inside of Contact Center, and this path would bring you to a location where we have a whole lot of existing on-prem subject matter expertise and domain experts as well. So those of you who are coming from Finesse, from CCX, UCCE, PCC, our on-prem platform, you're not going to have familiarity with all of that inside WebEx Contact Center. Same location, same dev, dev community, different label. So WebEx Contact Center APIs is what you want to label while asking questions. This is a best effort uh, kind of community participation, but we're pretty active. So people from all of our team, everyone here on the call, we're pretty active in in uh, responding to that. So you should be getting you know some sort of uh, acknowledgement about uh, an interesting solution or a problem, et cetera. But if you do need uh, dedicated support, what I would mention is uh, check out the developer support right? that we have. So this is a new addition to the dev portal. If you go to uh, WebEx Contact Center dev uh, support, you could uh, look at the developer portal right there on the, on the top right. You see support on the nav bar. Uh, you could submit a request, right? So what we recommend is uh, you could submit a request via the web form that's going to redirect to you to a form based uh, request or you could also send an email to our developer support uh, just by spinning up an email now what that's going to do is uh, it's going to trigger uh end-to-end -end ticketing process for any kind of developer support request now this is kind of uh, dedicated but still we do have slas right so we have two to three days slas to get back to you with uh, with a sort of uh, you know initial assessment if you will but use the developer support channels for everything break fix uh, everything in terms of, uh, you know, I have an issue. I want to know uh, what I want to do with that issue. That would be developer support. Another place you would want to use developer support is anything private. So let's say you're building an app and you don't want anyone else from the community to obviously see any of that intellectual property. You want to keep it private. Developer support is your way to go. You get one-to-one -one support uh, using dev support. Community, of course, recapping, it's public. So everyone can participate. Pretty much like Stack Overflow, you have upwards, downwards, we try to mark 80% uh, plus accepted solutions. So you will see on WebXCC APIs, if you filter by that label, you'll see a lot of accepted solutions on most of the posts. 
but uh, those are the two channels that we would recommend. So to wrap up this session, I'd like to share a couple of quick links. So all of those links, you don't have to bookmark it. We have now uh, quick links, uh, cs.co, WebXCC dev portal, WebXCC dev community, sample code, dev FAQs, uh, dev support, and then app hub, right? So uh, all of this is dedicated to WebEx contact center and uh, the whole contact center cloud ecosystem. So all of this will be shared. And uh, lastly, I think, uh, you know, both Phil and Adam are quite active on Twitter and on social. So we have a WebEx devs Twitter channel, and that's the official spot where you could, you know, get uh, social media, uh, you know, uh, visibility into what we're doing in terms of our events, whether we're doing any DevNet workshops, et cetera. And with that, uh, I'd like to hand it over back to Phil. Uh, Phil, I think um, we'd like to look at the slidos, right? Let's do one more poll. Um, I'm going to open that up now. Um, you know, now that you've got a good idea of you know the platform and some of the services that developers can can access, you know, well, which you know which of these topics um, is most important to you? Um, you can go ahead and rank these, um, and that'll help us you know plan our next series uh, for uh, the contact center platform. Yep, just go ahead and rank them up, like Phil said, uh, and then we'll have a quick discussion. So it looks like uh, analytics with the whole AI uh, story, uh, it's getting a lot of traction. Yeah. So the desktop and the reporting looks like they're neck, neck to neck. Yeah, and the good news is, like Sandhya mentioned, uh, agent and super the desktop APIs. At this point, we have both the widget SDK, and we have the REST APIs, and what you just saw with the webhooks, etc. So you could uh, build your own desktop uh, with WebSocket, build your own integrations. That's all available today. So what we're hoping to do is, um, we want to dive into all of these topics, um, you know, in our in our series. Um, to give you a little bit more information about how you can get started and, and what, are, what is the type of uh, integrations that are available today. Um, that way you can get an idea of uh, what's, what's happened so far, what type of um, integrations are available and where you uh, can jump in and um, work on your idea. Um, so yeah, please do let us uh, know if you have any other questions. You can always open support tickets as well. Um, if at all you're interested in something and uh, we'd, we'd be able to reach out back to you using the channel. Great, and um, uh, you know, it looks like we have a, a few minutes here. Um, so uh, maybe we can address some, some questions that we had from some of our attendees. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, the first one here, uh, that I put is, is it possible uh, to get full report uh, database access through the API specific to desk or team. Um, not sure about GraphQL. So I think I'd uh, answer that. Um, so we are hoping to publish a an export, uh, a bulk export API, where you would be able to choose um, what type of data you want to see and um, and give us a time range, and you should be able to download all of it. Um, it, it is not available at the moment, but it is in our backlog and please do look out for the release announcements um, because these are the kind of things that we will be um, you know, trying to communicate with you. Um, hopefully in our uh, newsletters as well, we'll be able to give you such information that this is coming out and um, you can start leveraging it. And, and yeah, I'd like to add on uh, uh, to Hari's uh, question as well. So your GraphQL sample, basically you want a full table export, if you will. For example, if you want an export of all the you know fields in the agent session table, you can see there's an example here uh, about 101 fields. But uh, what you would do is, like Sandhya mentioned, it's a, it's kind of a pull. Uh, it is a REST API where you'd have to make a call, but you could tag along with the task webhook. So what we would say is, in the webhooks, whenever you have a task ended, right, you build an API, uh, build an app that operates on the task ended event. Anytime a task gets done on the call uh, on the contact center. You have the task ID of the task. Uh, you could then do a GraphQL API call right after that and pull all of the fields in that task and push it on to another table, call it task detail table, et cetera. So those tables, uh, I, I call it tables because it's easy uh, to kind of relate, but they're, they're objects on GraphQL, but those tables uh, are available here uh, inside of our docs. So you could see task details here. You could see uh, agent session, for example. 
So all of this is available um, and all the fields inside those tables are also schema definitions available. If you just click down the graph, go all the way down, you see all the 100 and something fields that we mentioned there. So, yeah. Great, thanks. And I, I didn't see this one answered yet. So um, the question is, uh, what is the direction and future of the analytics section? You know, is this an area where you want more partner integrations? That's a great question. Um, so our business development uh, team, they, uh, they have a, a clearer idea of um, what type of analytics um, you know, our partners are looking for. Um, every single day, we have a lot of these um, requests coming in. We have the A2Q process as a part of contact center onboarding, um, where someone from healthcare would just come in and say, this is, what exa this is exactly what I'm looking for. Do you have a partner that you uh, are working with uh, for this type of solution? Um, and depending on the requests, we do have certain um, you know analytics that we're looking for, and that's that's something that uh, the business development managers would probably be able to give you a little bit more idea on. Um, but if you have an interest, please do uh, fill out the interest form that we do have. Um, that way, you can probably get an audience with them, um, and and they can help you with uh, the go to market strategy and and how you want to position your app. Great. Okay, and here's another one. Um, can I change the queue of a task or call at runtime through some API? Does that queue need to be there in the flow through a queue contact activity? Yes, uh, at this time, uh, we don't have a task update API, but uh, that was an interesting question. So if you look at our task API today, uh, we have a update task here. Uh, it does uh, allow you to do things like uh, update the attributes, but the CAD variables of a task using a REST API. So let's say a task is already queued, you could um, update all of the business data using a patch request, but we don't have uh, an API that does uh, routing change per se. But what we could do uh, potentially to your use case is if you do have a call that is queued to a specific, uh, you know, um, uh, it's queued to a specific uh, entity, you could update that queue in real time. So we do have a queue update where you could potentially update because the, the way that at least in uh, WebXCC, if you look at this is a queue has call distribution groups. So it has like uh, teams that you uh, assign to a queue, right? So you could have team A, team B, team C, team D. You could pretty much uh, update it in real time, but at this point it's all through flow designer, um, through the uh, you know uh, flow design um, uh, interface. So that is how you would need to update the routing in real time. So uh, what we could do uh, potentially, and I've seen a lot of customers do this, is uh, have a queue step, Right after the queue step, you have an HTTP request on, does this need a new queue? So you could serially queue, um, the, you know, you could have queue one and then queue two and queue three. You could kind of have it like a, in a waterfall and change the routing. But you would do it with the flow designer and an HTTP request, where here it's a client. So WebXCC as a, as a client makes an HTTP call, okay, where should I queue it next? And then you change the queue there. Um, but interesting question, thanks. Great, and uh, I think that's uh, time for us here. Um, I think we had a great turnout with a lot of really good questions, and this was some great contact, uh, uh, great content for Contact Center. Uh, so again, we really appreciate everybody who did attend. Uh, we'll try to get uh, any questions that didn't get answered uh, in the thread, so just follow along with that. Um, and again, here are some resources to, uh, to help you get uh, started and uh, more familiarized with everything that was talked about today. Uh, again, you can look forward to uh, more uh, webinars you know, on Contact Center platform in the near future. So stay tuned. Uh, but with that, uh, thank you very much to our speakers and all of our attendees, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone.